Okay, now it's time to move our data out of the controller itself and move it into, well, basically JSON files. JSON is JavaScript object notation. So essentially it's gonna be a folder that's gonna hold files or data that's related to our blog. Now, in this case, we are not setting up a API RESTful service. Um, instead, we're gonna be using this JSON data. And what we're about to do, if you've already set up something in, like a RESTful API, such as in the Django REST framework project, you can actually use this method to get that data. And eventually we will actually connect this Angular project to a Django backend. Um, we're gonna be doing that in a different series, but the idea here is very simple. We're gonna be taking this data using HTTP requests to a server. In this case, we're emulating that server and we're emulating the data that would come from that server by using JSON files. So to go ahead and do this, we're gonna jump into our app and we're gonna make a new folder inside of the SRC folder. We're gonna make a new folder in there and we're gonna call it JSON. So that's J-S-O-N. And in here, we're gonna make a new file and we're gonna call this file posts.json. And in here, this is where we're gonna put our posts. In fact, we're gonna get it from our blog items. I'm gonna go ahead and go from this bracket to this bracket. And we're just gonna copy this whole thing and I'm gonna paste it into this posts. Right off the bat, I'm gonna go ahead and tab these things back. We do see that there's errors in here. So these, to get them in JSON notation, we have to put them inside of quotes. Really simple, straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, pause the video and come back. So now we have all these quotes done. Um, this is basically JSON um, format. We've actually formatted this in JSON so our JavaScript can actually work with this. And since we have this JSON here, we actually wanna go into our config file and set up our new static files. We wanna add this JSON folder in there, so slash JSON. And now that we have that, we can actually go into our project and go JSON slash posts.json and now we see this JSON data. Um, and it is formatted in a way that we formatted it, right? So like it looks the way we actually formatted it. It doesn't actually matter how it's formatted. Like if this, if it was like this and we came back, that doesn't really matter. It, it, all that matters is the data that's in there and that we have the quotes and all the other necessary formats as needed. So back into our components, I'm actually gonna go ahead and comment out a lot of the things that we are not gonna use anymore, but eventually we will go back to them. So, or at least we're gonna reference them. So I'm gonna just put them below everything by cutting some stuff out. And then we will comment those things out. Of course, we will still use this Angular for each stuff, but I just wanted to make it nice and clean to what it's eventually going to look like. All right, so we've got this not found coming through still, but now what we wanna do is HTTP. So adding this actual service allows us to do HTTP methods. That is, we can actually get things. So we can do a request inside of here. So HTTP.get is a get request from Angular. So we can use this for all sorts of things. In this case, we're gonna do it in JSON slash posts.json. And then after that, we'll just say then, and we're gonna want our callbacks here. So we're just gonna set up our callbacks. I'll do success callback and failure callback or error callback. So I'll just call it failure callback or well, let's stick with what is in the documentation. So we'll say error callback and that's that. So these callbacks, we actually have to create them. So I'm gonna do a function and I'll call it success callback. And that's gonna take in a few parameters, which we'll talk about in a second. And then of course we want our function of our error callback. And there we go. So we now have these functions ready for us. Now, of course, what you wanna note about these is you could put these functions in here. They don't actually have to be written out this way. Um, if you know JavaScript pretty well, then yes, you would see that. But the reason I wanna separate them out especially is because we don't wanna have the functions together. It starts to get a little crumbled up if we have them all together. So to make it a little bit easier on us in the future, we have them separate. And what comes back on this success callback is we could do a response 
from our request, so the response, and then we would have a few other things, so like the status, any configuration, and well as the status text. So we can log all those things, or I could just console log the response. And I'm also gonna keep not found equaling to false for now. And then the same sort of things we can have come back on our error callback. So I'm gonna go ahead and console log those as well. This is, of course is gonna be a server error. It's not necessarily gonna be a data error. It's just gonna be a server error. So in here, we're gonna go ahead and, and actually run this request and see what the response is. So let's go back into our project into, we wanna go into a detail view here now and we get an un unexpected token issue. So let's refresh. Looks like that token is still coming through incorrectly. So the reason it is, is because of this last little comma. JSON's a little, little um, finicky when it comes to working with that data. So we wanna make sure that we have valid JSON data and it has to do with this comma. There are JSON validators online, so you could actually paste it into a validator and it would clean it up for you, or at least show you the error. Um, so if I refresh this again, now it actually comes through and it shows me what the response is. So it's actually giving me all of the response text right there. So back into our component, we have our response here. So if I did console log response.data and refresh back in here, I now get those four objects. So the four blog posts are actually coming through with this data. So what I can actually just say is scope.posts equals to response.data. And now I can iterate through those things once again with this Angular uh, for loop here. And I'm gonna just tab the things a little bit differently. And of course we named blog items different. So I'm gonna come back one more time and say var blog items equals to response.data. And I'll say posts is the same. Okay, so now we should have everything working as expected. Let's bring it back to being true. And we'll refresh in here, click on our blog items. It looks like we're still getting an error. So I'm gonna go ahead and do false. And let's see why. So we got our blog items in here. I'm gonna go ahead and console log the blog items. And we'll refresh, click on one. And there it's working again. It looks like it, it just had a little error there. So let's bring it back to being not found being true. And I think I know why actually. So if we click on this, the reason it's actually not working correctly is because we're doing this HTTP get. We're actually doing a request and it's taking some time. So it's not gonna be instantaneous like it was before. Instead, it actually has to do the request. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually just gonna put that not found inside of the success callback as well as the error callback. Now I want to note that these not found stuff is not gonna be relevant in the future. That is when you have a backend system, this part of not found would actually come in your error callback. So you don't actually have to think of it in, in any other terms, but we're not worrying about that stuff right now. We're really just worrying about getting the JSON data here. I'm gonna get rid of all these console logs because I no longer need them now that we've done some of our own stuff. But the thing here about the console log is you wanna make sure that you do it. You get in the habit of doing this console log to see the data that's coming through. If I save here and refresh, click on it, looks like our URLs are coming through. Um, really cool, very straightforward. Um, if you've worked with any sort of REST framework or a request framework, such as like Python requests, this should look very familiar. If you worked with jQuery before, this also should look very familiar. And you might be wondering, oh, can I do HTTP.post? You absolutely can do that. That is not something we're gonna cover here because we don't have a backend system set up to actually handle the post data in this sense. But you absolutely can do it in Angular. It's very easy, just like what we see here. It's not a whole lot different. You might need to add headers and configuration, which you can add in a configuration fold, or excuse me, a dictionary right here that would actually allow that to happen, whether it's a get request or a post request um, or any other kind of HTTP request. Great, so if you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.